Welcome back to Ohio Maine's Business. Indicators show the economy starting to stabilize in 2010 after the worst recession in U.S. history, but the recovery will be slow. So how will this affect companies in 2011? Joining us now with an outlook and the bottom line, Jay Barney, the Chase Chair for the Excellence in Corporate Strategy at Ohio State's Fisher College of Business. Jay, thanks for your time. We appreciate it. Glad to be here. We mentioned 2011. Let's talk about that in just a moment. 2010. Uh, on the negative <laughs> side, what's the worst things, uh, the, the, some of the bad things that have happened to companies in 2011 coming out of this year? Well, for as firms move from 2010 to 2011, the challenges still are there, mm -hmm. very significant challenges. We still have high unemployment, which has an impact on consumer demand, obviously. And I think the other big lingering challenge, surprisingly, is capital flow. The, uh, the, the, the access to capital has not been there for a lot of, comp for a lot of companies to fuel their growth. And so that has slowed things up dramatically. You uh, are a teacher. Your other hat is to teach companies, if that's fair to say. Sure. How do you, what do you advise them uh, right now in this business climate? Well, you know, uh, there are very few business climates where there is no opportunity. And there is opportunity <laughs> here to grow. Sure. Uh, especially for firms that have cash on hand and have strong brand name, strong market positions. This is a great time to grow their businesses, to look for market share growth, bring more consumers in, uh, innovate, even to acquisitions as well. And in fact, uh, it, it, across, the, across the U.S. economy right now, firms have more cash on hand than they've had historically. So it's a historical high levels. Firms that have the cash, have the brand, have the market position, there's, there's opportunities here. And, and like you said, there are advantages, some advantages to a down economy. One is if you're investing in the stock market, uh, it's always best to do to go low. Can only go up, that's right. Uh, <laughs> starting a business or growing a business, right. two different things there. Right. Is, uh, is that a good thing to do during a down economy? Uh, starting a business? Starting a business and growing a business. The, yeah. the challenge with starting a business is the access to capital because, mm -hmm. again, the capital flow, uh, either through banks or through venture capital firms or through business angels, I think has been pretty limited over the last little. Now that might be freeing up now. That would be exciting. Uh, that would help to grow the economy dramatically. Um, in terms of growing a business, um, either growing it organically through acquiring customers. Look at a firm like Walmart. Their customer base has grown dramatically over the last few years. Strong brand name, excellent product and services, and at the low price end. And so that has drawn people who are now uh, conscious of the need to have uh, better value in their purchasing. And Walmart's, uh, Walmart's big challenge now is, going to, is to try to keep a hold of the new customers they've been able to, to capture during the recession. And yeah, that's a company that has taken advantage of its opportunities. Let's talk about some other companies. You mentioned Walmart, uh, Ohio Company, Procter & Gamble doing pretty well, <laughs> Southwest Airlines. Talk about some companies that are doing well in this climate right so, now. So p and is a really interesting example because in the middle of, uh, of the recession, they make a decision to sort of get out of their more mature, some of their more mature businesses, raise capital, have the capital, and then invest in innovation. Now, if you look at, at, at P&G, they are really radically transforming themselves to become a more higher margin, uh, uh, more highly differentiated products. Very successful, I think. Will be very successful in making that happen. And they've used the recession to position themselves for growth in 2011 and beyond. When you go into a company, they hire you for basically your counseling and your advice. Um, what do you tell them? Is it always the same thing, or is it just based on the circumstances? Well, it's based a lot on the circumstances. Um, my, uh, my research uh, really focuses on uh, understanding what uh, special skills firms have, what distinctive competencies they have that enable them to gain competitive advantage going forward. And that varies by company dramatically. And so, um, and so we uh, do a lot of work that's individualized that way. You look at a firm like uh, um, Cardinal Health is a company that we've done some work with here in Ohio. Very successful firm, has rolled up the pharmaceutical distribution industry uh, and been very successful at doing that. Uh, the big challenge for them question has always been what's next on the agenda, but I think they're also well positioned uh, to, to take advantage of the recovery. Interesting thing there is, is we talked about P&G, people would not realize that Cardinal Health is Ohio's biggest company. Oh yes, actually. by far, yes, yeah, in most, terms of sales. Most least. people are surprised by <laughs> that, yeah. Let's talk about some of those big companies. If you just look at the stock market, mm -hmm. Apple doing great, uh, well, Ford so. really coming on strong. Sure. We'll see what happens with GM, right? How important it is for these big mega companies to do well, to kind of steer the economy? You know, I think that that's important, obviously, and they, they represent some, some significant employment. And that remember, that structural unemployment is one of the biggest problems going forward. 
Um, but I think uh, I think that most people agree that uh, that most of the employment growth is really driven by medium-sized companies, companies in the middle, not the giant organization, not the tiny little startups, right. but companies that you know, 100, 200 employees, uh, several hundred million dollars in sales and revenues. These are these are the real engines of the economy these days. Government money helps a little bit when you get rescued <laughs> in, in tough times. But let, let's talk about 2011. Right. We've heard for a couple years now, since March of 2009, 2011 is supposed to be this magical that's, that's time. Right. Is that's that right. the case? Well, you know, if I knew that for sure, I wouldn't be talking to you. <laughs> right, I'd yeah. be uh, investing on that basis. But uh, I think most people are reasonably optimistic. I'm not saying that uh, all the problems have been overcome. I still think we have restrictions on capital flow. I still think we have the consumer demand questions that we need to be concerned about. But um, I, I expect to see a lot of uh, important economic activity at the firm level over the next, uh, next, next, next several months. For example, I do expect to see over the next 10 to 12 months an increase in number of mergers and acquisitions. As firms take the capital they have on hand, and they have a lot of capital on hand, once the bank cash starts flowing in, then they can use that money to fund business activities like acquisitions, which allows them to take advantage of their cash and their brand name, the strength that they have going forward. I think whatever happens, depending on whose uh, uh, opinion or prediction you believe, 2011 is going to be a fascinating year. Uh, Jay Barty, absolutely. Thank you for your time. We, thank we, you. We do appreciate, appreciate it. it. And